stand to your feet. I just want to read a couple scriptures. I'm going to read three scriptures to you. I'm going to be in Ephesians, 2 Corinthians, and Romans. So I want to read these three key verses to you as I continue in my series on fresh and new. In Ephesians, the fourth chapter in the 24th verse, this is out of the NIV. And to put on the new self, and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Can we read it together? And to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Go to 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter in the 17th verse. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature or a new creation. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. How many have heard that scripture before? Let's read it together. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And then Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Anoint every ear to hear, every mind to perceive, and every heart to believe in Jesus' name. And everyone said, you may be seated. This evening, I'm going to go back in for a few brief moments tonight about the changing of garments because this is very, very pivotal to where we're going to move because we're a church that believes in the proclamation and the demonstration of the Spirit. It's, we are not just a preaching church or a proclaiming church, but we're a church that proclaims and demonstrates. And part of the demonstration of the Spirit is through the manifestation of the gifts, through the laying on of hands, through anointing with oil, through many different ways that God uses us to bring the grace, the deliverance, the healing, the blessing of God from heaven to earth. So tonight I'm going to touch back in a very strategic way about the changing of garments because I believe we're in a changing season for the church, for the ministry, for my ministry, for your life and your ministry. I believe we're getting ready to see something miraculous happen as we're entering into the 50th year of this ministry in the Denver area. My father began this ministry in 1970. So we're at 2020, do your math, this is our 50th year. I started out leading song service. We didn't have praise and worship back then, we just had song service. I knew about 12 songs and I worked those songs really well. But um, I started out as a teenager, 15, 16 years old, working with my father and my mother. And for the last 50, 50 years, our family has invested itself in this city. And uh, we thank God for that. But we've always been a proclaiming and a demonstrating church. But there's something about this year of 2020 that I believe is sovereignly going to touch your life. And I believe it's going to be a year that we're going to see garment changes, which to me symbolize promotion. And uh, when, there's, when there's garment changes in the military, it has to do usually with promotions. Naturally, there's battle fatigues versus your dress blues, as they would say. But there is, when there is a promotion, there is a changing of garment. And I want to talk to you about God promoting you to the next place that he has for your future spiritually. And I'll get into that in depth tonight. But today I want to talk about some important things. I want to talk about this new, fresh thing that God is doing in you. And in many of you, he's already done it, but you're not recognizing the fullness of who you are in Christ. And I told you I was going to go deeper today. So first of all, it says in Ephesians 4.24 that she put on the new self or the new man 
created to be like God. Put on the new self or the new man created to be like God. It's almost that he's paralleling this like putting on a garment. He's paralleling it to you're putting something on. He made you body, soul, and spirit. So he's talking about putting on the new man or the new self that is created in righteousness, which after God is created in righteousness and holiness. I thank God for his grace, but I also thank God for the fact that he created us to have dominion. I, I believe God has a better plan for you than just running laps and every day you run a lap and say, okay, I did the same horrible thing today that I did yesterday. How many believe it's about time for God's people to get delivered and get free? Well, you have to have an expectation. Motivational speakers maybe call it a goal. But you have to have a spiritual expectation that you were created to be like God. Say, now, Pastor, you know, that's just way. Well, read your Bible. You were not just created to be forgiven. You were created to be like God. God made man in his image and his likeness, and the image and the likeness of God was stolen because of man not listening to God. But God intended for us to have dominion. So we are to put on the new self or the new man to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Now all your life is as a cycle of forgiveness. Thank God for his grace. Where would we be without it? But how many believe we need to break out into a place of having authority over what has had authority over us? Now in 2 Corinthians 5 17 it said if any man be in Christ he is a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature or a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So if we're a new creation, then old things have become dead. And all things are become new. Everybody say fresh and new. If any man is in Christ... In Christ, in Christ, he is a new creation. So you're not designed to be a caterpillar with wings to where you can lift off every once in a while. No, you're created to be a new creation. Now, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Now, I'm going to dive into this thing about the butterfly a little bit today. And virtually everybody in the house knows, and I'm going to get a little more in depth here in a couple of minutes, but we know that the caterpillar is kind of where this thing starts. And the caterpillar is a devourer. He lives by devouring. Then there is a certain point and I don't understand it, and probably scientists don't even understand it, but the caterpillar becomes enveloped in what we call a cocoon. And in the cocoon, the caterpillar dissolves. Now, the, 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 you got to catch this. In the cocoon, the caterpillar as it was dies. Old things are passed away. And then in a process of depending on the species, anywhere from two weeks to maybe close to a year, a new creation process is taking place. And there's a reorganizing of all the genes and the chromosomes because what is getting ready to emerge is completely of no resemblance to what went into the cocoon. Everybody say, in Christ. in Christ. See, if you're in Christ, 
you are enveloped in his power and in his presence. How, ma how many of you went to church before you truly became born again? You know, let me see. My Lord. So you know what I'm talking about. You know what it is to go to church and there was no transformation. You know what it is to go to church and pray prayer, say the name of Jesus, go through the forms, the rituals, whatever it might have been, depending on what denominational group you were affiliated with. It really doesn't matter what denomination, but people sit in church and they, not, they do not become transformed. But how many remember that there came a moment in time, for lack of a better way to describe it, that God began to envelop you. And he began to put his presence and wrap his presence all around you. And it caused you to come to a place of not just I'm a church attender, but come to a place to hunger and thirst to be born again. And you cried out to God and you repented and you asked God to forgive you of your sins and you invited him into your heart. And as I would say, he then started to cocoon you. And what happens in the cocooning process is the dissolving of the old nature, which also dissolves the old appetites. Because a butterfly, when the butterfly breaks out of the cocoon, Nobody. If you put a caterpillar next to a butterfly, there is no resemblance. I mean, come on, get real. You know that a caterpillar, that the butterfly was the caterpillar, but when you just look at it, you say, oh, yeah, well, I see the old caterpillar body, and now we see the beautiful wings, and we see the... We see the no, there is no connection, because the caterpillar died in the cocoon. And what you've got to understand something here today is that when you are in Christ, it brings death to the old DNA. Now, we're going to go somewhere with this today because I believe God's people are living well below their birthright because they have no clue what it really means to be born again. Now, I'm just going to come up here where it's safe because you're giving me that look. Because, see, something happens when you get born again. It means you're born again. It means you are no longer a caterpillar. It means you are a butterfly. Come on, guys. Come on, men. you got to get with me. I know you, this is not your perfect analogy. But the truth of the matter is there is no resemblance between the old you and the new you. And when the old you tries to rise up, you've got to begin to realize that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You don't have to go back. Even though milk and diet cookies theology, all they want to talk to you about is running the lap of every day and every week, huh? Well, it doesn't matter. His grace is sufficient. Yes, his grace is sufficient, but he has designed you to be in his image and in his likeness. And that does not mean once saved, always saved. That means you have become a new creation. That means you have become transformed. That means there has been a spiritual metamorphosis in your life. And now the old you has been dissolved. Oh, you can clap better than that. If you're going to do it, then do it right. <laughs> Romans 12, 1. Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. So at some point, how many understand that you have a spirit and then you have a soul? And your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions that dwells in a body. So when you present your body, you are presenting your body, your soul, and your spirit because your body is the house that houses the mental side, the emotional side, you with me? And the eternal spiritual side. So I beseech you, beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body in essence, body, soul, and spirit unto God as a living sacrifice. 
See, now, if you're really going to get the metamorphosis that God wants to create in your life, at some, time you got, at some moment, you've got to turn yourself over to God. You've got to lay yourself on the altar. We've been laying things on the altar. Oh, God, I'm going to lay my cigarettes on the altar. Oh, God, I'm going to lay my alcohol abuse on the altar. Oh, God, I'm going to lay my, my, my addiction to pornography on the altar. Yes, those things need to be broken off of our life. But stay with me. But if you're really going to do this, you've got to lay yourself on the altar. You've got to say, God, everything I am, everything that has tried to hold me back, everything about the old generational things that make me talk like my father or act like my mother when all those things were not really anointed, all of those personality traits, all of those prejudices, all those bigotries, all those uh, uh, limitation, fearful thinking, all of the substance abuse, all the addictions, all of the anger. I, I'm presenting my body as a living sacrifice because God, this is not just about dying and getting to heaven. This is about living and walking in your image and walking in your likeness and being the man of God, the woman of God that I have been preordained to be. Present your body as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Next verse. And be not conformed, or basically don't, don't get into the pattern of following the pattern of the world. Isn't it amazing how much of our life is dictated by people that live lives that are diametrically opposed to everything that God stands for. We are politically correcting ourselves to hell. Thank you for the 12 disciples. Because we want to be so embracing of everything because we don't want to offend anybody. But Jesus himself said, I'm the rock of offense. As true Christians, at some point, ladies and gentlemen, we can't embrace certain things. And we have to have enough backbone to say that doesn't play in my world. Come on. So it said, don't be conformed to the world. Why? Because you have presented your body, soul, and spirit as a living sacrifice. So if you have presented yourself, laid yourself on the altar, you are not to be conformed to this world, but you are to be transformed, which means the Greek word there is metamorpho. It is the word that we get metamorphosis. It is the process that turns caterpillars into butterflies and other creatures go through metamorphosis as well. But what I want you to see that God said, I want you to lay yourself on the altar and then you are not going to follow the pattern of the world, but you are going to be metamorphosed by the renewing of your mind. The Lord said, let this mind be in us, which is in Christ. The word said, to be carnally minded is death, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. The Bible said, if we lack wisdom, we ask God for it, and he gives it to us liberally. Uh, the Lord said, bring every thought into captivity unto the obedience of Christ. The word renewing there, uh, with all of you that like all these renovation shows, like uh, the fix and flip shows, or love it, or list it, or whatever, it's about renovation. And when you let the Holy Ghost into your thought processes, he's going to start renovating stuff. I was watching that uh, Restaurant Impossible the other night. Uh, it's come down to this, folks. About the only thing you can watch on TV is restaurant and cooking shows and fix it and flip it shows. Because the rest of it's most of it's all trash. But that's my old school opinion. But I'm watching um, whatever that... 
bulky chef's name is. What, what's his name? Well, don't talk to me if you can't remember. You're confusing me now, Duke. <laughs> Thought you had the answer. What? Robert Irvine. That's it. Thank you. Oh, bulky Robert Irvine. And he's looking at this restaurant, and this guy's going under, and he says, well, here's what we're going to do, is, is the case with every show. They just gut the place. And the poor guy's standing there. He'd been there for 25 years. And he said, all my memories are being taken out the door. All my yesterdays are gone. All my past is gone. But the problem is his past was putting him in into bankruptcy. And so God is saying, if you want to hold on to all this old thinking, thinking about the betrayals, thinking about who hurt you, thinking about who abused you, thinking about who did this and who did that and all these memories that are not present, then fine, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life. So that means when I renovate your mind, it is a result of your metamorpho, which is a result of you laying yourself on the altar and saying, I will not be conformed to this world. So what starts happening? Now God starts doing renovation in your thinking, and he starts ripping out all the old thought processes, all the old reactionary processes all the old defense mechanisms uh, all of these things uh, and he says now let this mind be in you which is in Christ uh, that you can prove uh, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God God doesn't want you in confusion God wants you knowing what his will is for your life Mm, about to bless myself. See, God wants to take you from ugly to beautiful. God wants to take you from just being another destroyer out there on the leaves to being one of a kind that everywhere you go, excuse me, you pollinate and you produce and you give life. God didn't call you to be destroyers. God called you to be life givers. God didn't call you to have an appetite of devouring. He called you to have an appetite for life giving. But when you come out of that spiritual cocoon, the old you has been dissolved. And let me say this, now you have a born again DNA. People are all about the, the family tree thing. Man, I'm telling you, I'm scared to do that. <laughs> I don't know what kind of nuts are in my family tree. And I don't think I want to know. I just get discouraged. Ancestry.com, that's one of the big ones. Because we, we, we've got to know whether we're German, Italian, are you with me? Lithuanian, Chinese, whether we're from this part of Africa, are, are, you, are you with me? Whether, you know, you know, what's our ancestry? What's our ancestry? What's our ancestry? Because if we're Scottish, we now got to go to the Scottish festival and put a dress on. <laughs> got to get our Celt. Come on. If we're Irish, we really got to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. If we're Italian, we got to eat pasta more. Are you with me? Because we got to know where we came from. I'm going to let you in on a secret about this. We all came from the same garden. And my mother and my father, out of that garden, were created with a DNA of dominion. They were created with a DNA that when people would look at them, they would see God because they were in his image and in his likeness. So if you want to know about your ancestry.com, see if they can take you all the way back to the Garden of Eden because that is really where you came from. Now I'm in trouble. But see, you come out of this 
metamorphosis of being born again because we got ripped off back at the garden and then the enemy put in the spirit of wrath, rebellion, and disobedience. He brought things into our lives from dysfunctional behaviors and abuses. Some of you have never been the same since you were sexually abused as a child. Some of you have never been the same since you were physically abused in a relationship or in your family. Are you with me? You have never been seemingly right since you've been told all your life you weren't good enough, you weren't smart enough, you weren't this, you weren't that, so on and so forth. But what you've got to understand that God wants to put all that to death. He wants to bury all of that. He just doesn't want to forgive you of your sins. He wants to destroy the root of the DNA of sin. And he wants to give you an Ancestry.com that is not about Scottish or English or African or Asian. He wants to give you a DNA that has to do with you are flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone. Okay, okay. Keep diving with me now. Keep diving with me. Titus. It said 3 5. Titus 3 5. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration. Everybody say regeneration. And the renewing of of the Holy Ghost. Hmm. Regeneration. I wrote this small. Let me get my contacts dialed in here. Regeneration has to do with the restorate, your restoration, and putting you into a new state. Okay. God knows what the original intent was for man. So when he starts doing the work of regeneration, his first goal is to get you back because restoration is about putting something back to what it was intended to be. Okay? And then it causes you to come out of the state you were in into the preordained state that God intended you to be in. I heard Bishop Jake say this one. I'll give him credit for it. He needs all the help he can get. Poor little guy. He enunciated the word different. Instead of regeneration, he called it regeneration. Because when you get born again, do you think God doesn't know how everything that works in you, that all the genes and the chromosomes and all these different things that are uh, connected in you that has caused you to look like you look and be the height that you are and have the eye color that you have also has shaped and molded personality uh, traits. He knows it all comes from the genetics. So he said, now I've got to regenerate this person. I have got to get them back to whom they were originally created to be. Now We've got to get them to get the revelation that they were not created to be victims, but victors. They were not created to be dominated, but to have dominion. Now, as I put vision back in them of who they were created to be, then I dissolve the old DNA. Now, I'm going out here, folks, so you better stay with me. I'm going to dissolve the old DNA and I am going to put them into a new estate. I want you to get delivered from all of this 
carnal connection. Because if your brain's going to get right, you got to let Chef Irvin or Irvine come in and rip all the junk out and say, we're starting over. And this is what God's having to do with us. He said, old things, we are clearing it out. And all things are becoming new. And you're going to think different. And if you think different, you're going to talk different. And if you talk different, you're going to speak life and not death. And if you think different and you talk different, you're going to walk different. And you're going to live different. Are you with me? Because now you are not who you were. You are who God created you to be. I am who God says I am. I am. It doesn't matter what anybody says I am. It matters what God says I am. I'm the light of the world. I'm the salt of the earth. I'm a king. I have royalty. I have authority. I am a priest. I know how to connect to God. I'm part of a chosen generation, royal priesthood, holy nation, unique people that show forth the praises of the Lord God that brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. My body is the habitation place of God I don't care who my ancestors are in the natural what I care about is my father is Abba father and my brothers are the redeemed of the Lord he saved us by the washing of regeneration so the cleansing that comes through being regenerated and the renewing of the Holy Ghost, which again gets back into this, this terminology of renovation that makes a person different. I'm going to go back to the, the restaurant impossible. So he, he brings the people in and he cover, tells them to close their eyes. And virtually every time after he has gutted and renovated, they open their eyes and say, this doesn't look like the same place. Well, it doesn't because most of them look pretty bad. <laughs> this doesn't look like the same place. I can't believe this place looks like this. I can't believe how contemporary it is. I can't believe how beautiful it is. I can't believe, oh, my Lord. I and then they start crying. All these men start crying. There's no crying in baseball. These men start crying, and their wives start crying, and then their kids start crying. And, 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 and they're looking at a room that has been renovated. And they say, doesn't look like the same place. So God's saying, I want to renew you through the Holy Ghost to where you don't even look like the same place. No, people ought to look at you that knew you when you were on drugs, knew you when you were addicted to alcohol, knew you when you were just a hellion, knew you when you were full of anger, bitterness, prejudice, bigotry, addictions, bondage. They ought to look at you and say, I think I know who you are, but you don't look like the same place. You don't look like the same person. When you open your mouth, it's not a curse word, every other word, but it edifies, it blesses, it encourages. Are you following me? what's happened there has been a renovation of the Holy Ghost there has been a regeneration of who you are that you can rise up and say I am the born again I am redeemed and I am the born again of the Lord I am not a caterpillar anymore I am a new creation mm. John 3, 3, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Mm. 1 Peter 1, 23, being born again. Oh, oh, I can't get into this. this you, you can't handle this. No, you can't handle this. No, you're not ready for this one. I, I'll just skip over this scripture. You're not ready for this one. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, 
which liveth and abideth forever. Now, when you were originally created, your father fertilized the egg of your mother. And the life in her and the life in him came together and you were conceived. But the problem was mama carried corruptible seed and papa carried corruptible seed. Hang in here. Necessitating that you be born again. I don't care who you are. You live long enough, you'll sin. We do not sin because of our environment. We sin because it's inherent. The Lord said, being born again. Now, I, I'm trying to break some old thinking patterns. God is a God of forgiveness. We humble ourselves. We ask the Lord to forgive us, and he's faithful and just to forgive us. But we can't stop there. We have to say, wait a minute. I am born again. I am going to lay myself on the altar as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is my reasonable service. Whew. And I'm not going to be conformed to this world. I'm going to be metamorphosed by the renovation of my mind. The Lord said, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed. So now God goes and he takes your, for oh, good Lord, help me get this out. Takes your forgiven spirit. He takes your forgiven spirit. You with me? And he takes his incorruptible seed and unites it with your forgiven spirit. I'm slowing down. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ. If so, they would suffer with him, which is the laying of our body on the altar. If so, that we suffer with him, we will also be glorified together. So the Spirit, what Spirit? Your forgiven Spirit now bears witness with the incorruptible seed of God. And you become a son and a daughter of God. Now, I know this will hit you about 4 o'clock, about third quarter of the Kansas City game. It'll hit you. Say, wait a minute. Wait a minute. His spirit and my spirit bear witness one with the other. And therefore, I'm an heir and a joint heir with Christ. Therefore, I'm one of those that he talks about in Romans 8, 14. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Led by the Spirit. You become a man and a woman that is not conformed to this world, but you're metamorphosed by the renovation of your mind. Now your spirit and God's spirit have become one like the egg and the sperm. And it causes a supernatural, a supernatural conception. And that supernatural conception's result is the birthing of a, my God, a new creation. The dissolving, the dissolving, the dissolving, the dissolving of everything that you will find out on Ancestry.com. The dissolving to where race is not the issue. Family name is not the issue. Nationality is not the issue. No, what the issue now is I am born again. See, I, I, oh my God, ah, I, I don't know how I can make it because my mama was German and my daddy was English and they've been at war for generations and that's all on the inside. But I'm not a part of England and I'm not a part of Germany. I'm part of a 
holy nation. Oh, I have a nationality, and my nationality is holiness. Oh, my God. My nationality, I'm of a holy nation. I'm not of the United Kingdom. I'm not of the United States of America. I'm not of Canada. I'm not of Mexico. I'm not of Ghana. I'm no, 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 no. I'm part of a holy nation. I'm part of a holy nation because I've been regenerated. God, I got to quit. I'm going to choke you on this. Stay with me. See, if my mama was an American and my daddy was an American, but if I'd have been born in Hong Kong, I'd still be an American. Because mama was American and daddy was American. Well, see, now I'm of, uh, it doesn't matter where I started out at. If I'd have started out in Hong Kong or Ghana or started out in Mexico or started out in Venezuela or or started out in Canada, are are you with me? Or started out in Latvia or started out someplace, it doesn't matter where I start out at because my mama was American and my daddy was an American. And no matter where I started out at, I'm still an American. God didn't care where I started out at. He just said, I'm your daddy now. Now I have put my seed into the forgiven spirit of you. You come together with that, and now you are my son. So that makes you a member of my kingdom. Mm. Oh, God, give this. It said, you will not see the kingdom except you be born again. See, I can't become part of a holy nation or part of the kingdom except I be born again. You better hold, You better get this one and re-listen to it because I'm getting stuff hot off the griddle right now. See, I can't see the kingdom. I can't see and be a part of the holy nation if I'm not born again. So how do I get born again? I got to be regenerated. I got to be mentally renovated. I've got to have God say, I have walked washed you from your past sins. Now my seed and the egg of your forgiven spirit have become one. You are my son. You are my daughter. You are an heir. You are a joint heir with Christ. So anything and any benefit that comes with the kingdom is mine. Gala prayed on me and on the way in and said, God, give him, it. give him stuff hot off the griddle. Well, you're getting your prayer answered. I'm almost done. Whew. And if, if I'm an American, even though I would have started out in Hong Kong, I still am an heir of every benefit that being an American would bring me. Because my mama was American. And my daddy was American. So now my daddy is the king of the kingdom. So every benefit, I'm an heir and I'm a joint heir because my forgiven spirit has been fertilized now by the incorruptible seed of God himself. And the Lord said, that one, they're one of my sons. That one, they're one of my daughters. And all the benefits of being in my family and all the benefits of being in my kingdom are theirs. Somebody better shout. Okay, three more scriptures. A new heart will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony or stubborn heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh, which is a tender heart and a responsive heart. How many have found out as you have truly been regenerated, your heart is tender and your heart is responsive? 
But God said, now, I'm going to put a new spirit in you, and I'm going to put a new heart in you. And I think we've all been benefactors of not just saying I've been forgiven, which we have. But now God says, I'm going to put a new heart in you. I'm going to put a new spirit in you. Galatians 6, 15 says this. Galatians 6, for in Christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. Oh, God, help me with this. Don't let me get into too much trouble. You know what these two terms really represent? Racism. Everybody went, <gasps> no, really study the New Testament. Because the greatest debates of the New Testament had to do with the Jew and the Gentile. So the Jew was the circumcised, and the uncircumcised was all the rest of the world. All right? Oh, this is good. This is good. If anybody really wants racial reconciliation, they need to get a hold of this. See, now... If Paul's saying, you're making a big deal out of the circumcision, and therefore you are prejudiced against the uncircumcised because they're not circumcised. Well, that's not to say, no, 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 hold on now. It didn't. It could have just as easily have said, you are prejudiced against them because you're white and they're not. Because circumcision was flesh. You ought to be where I'm at looking at y'all. You're hilarious right now. It's like some of you have inhaled and have not exhaled since I said what I said. <gasps> so he said, in Christ, there's neither circumcision nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. So in Christ, if I'm in Christ and you're in Christ, there's neither circumcision nor uncircumcision but new creatures. So when I look at you, even though your complexion is different than mine, you're a new creature. When, when I look at you and you don't have any hair, and I do, there is nothing but a new creature. When, are, are you with me? When I look at you, I think you're Hispanic and origin. When I look at you, and I got this German English thing, uh, there is neither German English or Mexican origins or Hispanic. Uh, there is just new creation. Uh, is anybody listening to me besides me? Because I'm about to bless myself, Don. Uh, there is neither circumcision nor uncircumcision. There is none of this but a new creature. So when we look at each other, we're not looking at red, yellow, black, or white. We are looking at new creations. And all of this division that we have between races could all end tonight if we would just say we're new creatures. Paul went to war with Peter. Over this issue. Said you are in essence prejudiced against these Gentiles. And then we had all of the prejudiced folks say you won't get saved unless you get circumcised. That'd be like me saying to Tristan you can't be saved unless you get to be white. <laughs> Only white people get saved. Like Duke saying to me, unless you were born in Ghana, you can't be saved. You with me? This is hard on some of you because I'm trying to renovate your thinking. And your thinking's all bound up. 
Your thinking's all bound up because you got hurt in the past or you saw your race hurt in the past or you saw mistreatment to family members in the past. Are you with me? You saw abuses and there's a lot of demonic garbage that is going on in the world today that causes people to be pitted against people on nothing but the basis of their complexion, nothing on the basis of their national origin. Stay with me. And that is right out of the pit of hell. But the only way it's going to change is if we begin to say, wait a minute, uh, it's not about circumcision nor uncircumcision. It's about new creation. So when I look at you, I'm not seeing what new you came from, what color you are, how much money you make, all that's flesh. I'm looking at new creatures in Christ, uh, and we are part of the same family. We have the same father. We're part of the same nation. Oh, excuse me. I got the guts to preach this. Everybody's all touchy and feely. Somewhere we've got to come to a knowledge. We are new creatures. We are born again. Poochie could say to me, you're not Puerto Rican. You can't have the kingdom. I'd say, well, there's neither circumcision nor uncircumcision. Only new creations. Hmm. Oh. Um, um, um. Last verse, last verse. Everybody say, last verse. Because if I, if I get my thinking renovated, if I lay myself as a living sacrifice, if I get renewed, if I get regenerated, if all this stuff happens and all the junk gets hauled out from my past and the carnal mind is bound and I bring every thought into captivity under the obedience of Christ and I think different and I talk different and I walk different, it might not surprise me. Isaiah 62, 2. Isaiah 62, 2, and the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all kings thy glory, and thou shalt be called a new name. No. Thou shalt be called a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. My last scripture. You can breathe easy now. I'll give you a new name which my mouth shall breathe. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. So you have been named. You know who you were named by? Probably people that were born a corruptible seed. Now I'm not talking about your James or, or Bertha or Bubba or both Cephas or Buford. I'm not talking about those things. I'm talking about things that people have tagged you with. Talk about things people have tagged you with. And you have embraced those things. Rick Renner was telling the Sir Rick Renner, who's one of the smartest men I've ever met. Rick Renner, who can stand up and teach from the Greek with no notes. He's written sparkling gems. They're about that thick. They're like a dictionary. Rick Renner, who's probably forgotten, a, it's probably forgot, I, I don't even know how to describe it. Brilliant. When he was in school, he was sick, and he got behind in algebra. And so he comes back to his algebra class, and he'd missed several weeks of school because of the severity of whatever the, the sickness was. And so the class was ahead of him because all these algebra principles had been being taught. And he sits down 
and he can't get any of the answers right because he hadn't got the first basics because he'd missed the first three weeks of school. And the teacher nicknamed him stupid. <laughs> well, what's the answer, stupid? And it caught on. And his classmates started calling him stupid. <laughs> stupid Rick. Stupid Rick. Now under, then he had hair, but uh, under his skull was a brain of brilliance. But people kept tagging him something that was not accurate. And a lot of you have been tagged things that have nothing to do with who God says you are. And the Lord said, the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called by a new name which the mouth of the Lord shall name. I don't care who has said it or what has been said. God is getting ready to breathe into you a new name. You are going to begin to look at yourself through a different lens than what some abusive parent might have said or some bully in the schoolyard said or some person on the job might have said. Some people have made you to feel dirty, made you to feel like you could never achieve, made you to feel like you could never prosper, made you to feel like you could never be anything. Oh, I got a news flash for you. God's getting ready. He's drawing in a full set of lungs filled with air and he's getting ready to breathe into you a new name. My God, my God, my God. I, 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 I'm sea biscuit. I'm on the home stretch. But I want you to hear me. There was a name given to a woman, and her name was Sarai. And then there was a man named Abram. And these two people, these two people had a word from God that they would be the parents of a great nation. But yet Sarai, Sarai was barren, and Abram, was now past the age of his sperm being able to fertilize. So what am I kidding at? Stay with me. God, if you understand their name, you realize what God did was he breathed into Sarai and changed her name to Sarah. He breathed into Abram, and he changed his name to Abraham. And when he breathed into them, the name Sarai, which meant princess, changed to my princess. When he breathed into Abram, his name Abram meant exalted father. But when God breathed into Abram, he, he renamed him father of many nations. You know what it was? God putting his breath on who they were. And then God transformed who they were into whom they, he intended them to be. Jacob wrestled with God in a solitary place. And he said, I'll not let you go till you bless me. And God breathed a new name into Jacob, which meant supplanter and opportunist. Oh, I'm on the home stretch. Give me one more length here, and I'm going to get to the finish line. But then God said, I'm going to bless you. I'm out of my mouth, out of the breath of my mouth. I change your name from Jacob to Israel, which meant prince that had power with God. When God breathes into you, it doesn't matter what anybody has said. All that matters is what God said. And you're born again, regenerated, renovated. You got a new name. All things are dead and all things are new. Give God a shout today. Oh, cue up that break every chain song. 
You know which one I'm talking about, that, that army thing going. We're, we're getting ready to turn a corner in the kingdom. We're getting ready to turn a corner in the kingdom. All the Sarai's are getting ready to be Sarah's. All the Abrams are getting ready to be Abraham's. The Jacobs are getting ready to become Israel's. The little shepherd boy in the field that nobody wanted is getting ready to be King David. The servant, Elisha, that just was known for pouring water on the hands of the prophet is getting ready to be the man, the prophet of the double portion. There are some Elisha's in this house. David's in this house. Israel in this house. Uh, there are Sarah's in this house. Abraham's in this house. Uh, no more Saul uh, that was tagged with being the murderer even though he was. Uh, now he's known as Paul the apostle. Uh, why? Because when God breathes a new name uh, he has given you a new identity uh, and I'm going to say it again. I am uh, who God says I am. Go ahead Poochie. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. an army rising up. There's an, There's an army, army rising up. rising up. There's an army oh. rising up. There's an army rising up. So break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. Say it. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain. Stretch your hands this way. Now, Father, I declare in the name of Jesus, we're changing our garments. We're changing our garments. We're putting on the best robes. We're changing out of the filthy garments. And we're putting on garments that are clean and are washed and are sanctified. God, we're putting on new garments. We're putting on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. We're putting on new garments. We're getting ready to put on the new man. We're putting on the new self. We are not who men have created us to be. We are whom God has created us to be. Lord, I thank you. We're laying ourselves as living sacrifices on the altar. And God, we are being not because we've laid ourselves down we will not be conformed to this world uh, but we are being metamorphosed by the renewing of our mind we are dissolving the old uh, and the new is coming forth and fighting its way out of the cocoon uh, and our mind is being renovated uh, we're clearing out all the old junk and memories uh, that have shaped us into people that are living beneath our birthright and God I declare a new name is coming. I declare a new name is coming. I declare a new name is coming. We're putting on the fine linens. We are putting on the purple. We are putting on that which speaks of royalty. And I don't care where we've come from. We are new creations. We are the sons and daughters of God. And we're part of a holy nation. And I praise you
you, God, that I'm an heir and I'm a joint heir with Christ. All things are passed away. They're dead. They're dead. They're dead in the name of Jesus. Now circumcision nor uncircumcision avail, but new creations in Jesus' name. Come on, give him a praise. 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 Break every chain. To break every chain. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. There's an army. There's an army. There's an army. Right. Give God a shout of victory today. Hallelujah. 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 Now I'm going to get you out of here a few minutes earlier. Not many, but a few. But I really, this day is not morning service, evening service. This is a day that I believe are going, that is going to produce some things that you're going to look back to the third Sunday of January 2020 and say something broke off my life and God breathed a new name in me and I'm a different person. Tonight, I'm going to anoint you with oil. Tonight, I'm going to believe God to clothe you in purple. And tonight, I believe you're going to step from a position and a rank to another position and a rank. I don't know what else to say to you, but you just need to be here. I don't know what else to say to you. Because blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. If you want things to keep going in the same routines that they've been going, maybe your life's that good. If it is, praise God, stay home. But if you want to break through to something greater in God, this is a service you need to be at. And I'm going to anoint you. I'm going to pray over your request. I am going to bless you tonight. I'm putting on new garments myself. I'm stepping into some things that is due season for that. There's going to be a whole other generation of ministry raised up in this church. Because God's got to renovate our thinking. And I want some of you to stop and think, how would my life be if I could just clear all this stuff out? Of my thoughts but God said it can happen because he said you're metamorphosed by the renovation of your thinking if it's not possible why would he say let this mind be in you which is in Christ if it's not possible why would he say bring every thought into captivity under the obedience of Christ it is possible he said think on these things and as we think different, we walk different, we talk different, we act different, we live different. And if we can step in to what we were originally created to be, we will take this world back within a matter of days. The church has become weak because it's conformed. And that's all I'm going to say about that. We are up against principalities, power, spiritual wickedness in high places. We are up against, as God's 
angel army has archangels. We are up against archangels of the demonic realm. We are up against demon powers, and they are not taking days, weeks, and months off, and they are not conforming to this world. They are creating the culture of this world, and God's saying, if you will not conform, I will give you back what the devil has stolen. And the Lord would say to this house, it is the dawning of a new season. The Lord would say to this house, it is time for my mature sons and daughters to rise up and not accept that this is the limit that they must live in and walk in. I am ready, saith the Lord, to create a favor for you that you have never seen in your life. I am getting ready to bring double honor. I am getting ready to bring double blessing. I am getting ready to supernaturally increase you even though your natural mind says I'm too old, things are too far behind me. I say to you that I am going to give you a new day. I am going to give you a new name. I am going to give you a new season. I am going to produce new fruit and I will create new wine and fresh fire is falling and if you will not be afraid of what I am preparing to do, I will endue you with power like you have never walked in before and you will speak things that you have never had the courage to speak and I will put a creative word in your mouth and life will come out of your mouth and you will speak life into death, prosperity into poverty, health into sickness. You will speak reconciliation into division. You are not here by chance nor by accident. I am raising up an army and I say unto thee that from this remnant I will cause the fire of God to emanate from this house that will draw people from the north, the south, the east, and the west. This is a new season and saith God, prepare thyself, prepare thyself, prepare thyself. Uh, for did I not tell the children of Israel that they needed to prepare themselves, uh, that they would enter into the new promise? Did I not say unto them to sanctify themselves? For tomorrow the Lord would show wonders among them. I declare, sanctify yourself, prepare yourself, and I will do miraculous things, uh, healing is coming to your bodies. Healing is coming to your bodies. Financial release is coming to your lives. Peace is coming to your mind. Anxiety is going. Discouragement is going. And a fresh new mind of Christ thinking is upon you, saith the Lord of hosts. Somebody give God praise right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many are glad you've been in the house? I said, how many are glad you've been in the house?